Hey everyone, and welcome to Trend Micro's how-to series of videos. My name is Nicole Eby, and I'm a tech lead here with Trend Micro Tipping Point. Today we're going to talk about traffic management filters, which are created by the user to control the flow of many different types of traffic. And there's all kinds of reasons you'd want to do this. The most common use of traffic management filters, TMFs for short, is the ability to trust traffic from source to destination without any inspection from the IPS engine. Now that could be application data between two servers that should never be interfered with, or nightly backups between a trusted source and destination. It could also be something like voice over IP traffic, or any other application that really needs to prioritize performance over security. You can do all these things with the trust option in the TMF configuration menu. You can also use TMFs like traditional firewall rules, blocking traffic between two points or subnets, while using the allow action to permit smaller groups of hosts within that block to communicate freely. But what if there's a user or subnet that's using too much bandwidth and you want to limit that usage? You can create a rate limit action set just like you would any other action set and call it within the TMF creation menu to achieve your goals. TMFs are a powerful tool with a lot of options. So let's take a look at how to set one up. Today we'll be using an SMS and an 8400TX with 520 code for our demonstration. From your SMS client, go to Profiles, expand the profile list, choose the default profile, and then expand that as well. From here, click the Traffic Management entry at the bottom, and then finally click the New button at the lower right-hand corner of your screen to bring up the Create Traffic Management Filter window. As I mentioned before, the most common application of traffic management filters is to trust traffic between a source and destination explicitly. The creation wizard for that setup is pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of situations you should be aware of that might not be so evident when you're performing these steps for the first time. First and foremost is directionality. As you can see here under network settings, you're able to select either port A to port B or port B to port A. In some instances, especially in large organizations with remote data centers, there can be some confusion as to how the IPS segments are cabled. Creating a TMF with an incorrect direction for the traffic you're trusting means the filter won't be able to do its job. There's a couple of ways for you to figure out what that direction is, and the first is to check your events table for directionality. Let's take a look at one. Here you can see a sample events table showing traffic that was actually blocked by a filter. You can see source and destination addresses, which are searchable by right-clicking and using the Find or the Search On field. When you find the desired source or destination that's being currently blocked but needs to be trusted, you then look under the Segment Rule column to determine the directionality of that traffic, and use that A to B or B to A rule in your traffic management filter. But what if you find yourself in a position where you just need to trust all the traffic between a source and destination right away? and you don't have time to do the research or the legwork. Well, we've got an answer for you, and it's called a four-way trust. It's called a four-way because once we're done, there will actually be four rules we've created. Let me explain why. Using the wizard as it stands offers you the opportunity to choose create filters for both directions, which creates two rules. Now, this may be a bit confusing as it sounds like it would automatically trust traffic both ways. But what it's really referring to is the fact that it will trust a response from the destination address and port, say something like a login attempt that returns a success or failure message. That doesn't mean that a new connection from the destination to the source is trusted. If you truly want to trust all connections and responses from two separate locations, you simply run this wizard twice using the Create Filters for Both Directions button and then reversing the source and destination address. This creates two additional rules for a total of four. Let's do that now. Okay, we'll name the first filter server farm one to two, and we'll name the second one two to one. We want all traffic between these two networks to pass uninhibited, so our action choice will be trust accordingly. Then we'll create filters for both directions. For protocol, you can see a lengthy dropdown list. Best practice is to be as specific as possible, but for this example, we'll just leave the default choice of IP, as that automatically includes ICMP, TCP, and UDP. For the source and destination address, you can use individual IPs, subnets, 
or the any value, which is listed in the dropdown here. You can get as specific as what port you want to base the rule on. You can also use named resources, but that's a topic for another day. And just as a sanity check, if you're wanting to bypass all the traffic on the IPS for troubleshooting purposes, don't use this method. Use layer two fallback instead. For this demonstration, we'll use subnet 172.16.0.0 slash 12 for the first subnet. And for the second, we'll use 172.16.0.1 slash 12 without any specified ports. And then just click OK to continue. Notice that two rules are created. Two additional rules will be created when we run it a second time, which adds up to the four rules in a four-way trust. I'll create the second set of rules reversing the source and destination now. And there you have it. Notice that there are now four separate rules. If you're having trouble with directionality or have a situation where traffic needs to be trusted right away, I recommend you use these steps to address the issue. If you need to reduce the number of rules after the fact, you've now got time to figure it out. Now you'll notice they're numbered, and the rules can be moved using the move up and move down buttons on the lower right hand side. That's because the rules function in much the same way as firewall rules and should be ordered like them with more specific rules like fully qualified source and destination IPs at the top and more general rules like ones that apply to subnets at the bottom to ensure proper priorities are enforced. Changing a filter's order is automatically saved, but again, be sure to distribute the profile in order for the changes to take effect on your IPS or TPS device. There is one instance where you could continue to see events from the source or destination listed in a TMF despite having a perfect trust rule created and that's because there's a classification of filters that trump the traffic management filter in the inspection engine. These are called traffic normalization filters, and I'll pull them up so we can see what they are. We'll go to Profiles, Global Search, and in the Filter Category section, we're going to check the box next to Traffic Normalization to bring up the entire category and click Search. Traffic normalization filters block network traffic when the traffic is considered improper or malformed which protects the IPS engine and your network from packets that might be crafted to do harm. Even if the source of these packets is trusted in the traditional sense, the IPS will still utilize traffic normalization filters to protect itself in your network. Browse these filters at your leisure. And that wraps up our how-to for traffic management filters. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our Tipping Point Technical Assistance Center. And thanks so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.